Hello and welcome to the Electrical Engineering Bootcamp. In this lesson, I am going to cover Line Conductor Basics. Now, line conductors are used to transmit electricity from one place to another and the number and sizes of conductors used would hugely depend on the rated voltage and the number of circuits for the situation and the commonly used material for line conductors are copper aluminum and steel combinations of aluminum and steel as well as copper steel are commonly used as well copper conductors there are three forms of copper conductors used they are the hard drawn which is the strongest out of the three medium hard drawn and the soft drawn which is the weakest of the three Soft drawn copper wires is mainly used to tie down conductors to pin type insulators because it is easier to bend. Whereas hard drawn wires has the greatest strength but it is the hardest to work with. These are mostly used in long spans of transmission circuits. Medium hard drawn copper wires, on the other hand, are usually used with long distribution circuits. Aluminum. Aluminum is one third the weight, but only 60 to 80 percent conductivity, as and half as strong as copper. So, because of its strength, it can only be used for short distribution strands. Now, there's another technology called ACSR, also known as the Aluminum Conductor Steel Reinforced, is invented where the aluminum wires are stranded on a core of steel wire, which provides greater strength and light in weight comparatively to copper. ACSR are more and more widely used for main distribution feeders and transmission circuits. Steel conductors. Steel conductors are rarely used alone as it has relatively low conductivity compared to copper and also it rusts easily, even though it can be amended by galvanizing with a coat of zinc. However, the advantage is that it is really strong and comparatively cheaper than the alternatives. On the other hand, um, there's new technology called copper weld and aluminum weld that is introduced um, for specifically for guying on rural lines. These are steel wires coated with either copper or aluminum on the surface of the steel wire. Conductor stranding. Large con diameter conductors are very hard to bend and so stranded conductors are introduced which is a group of wires twisted into a single large one. It is usually grouped concentrically around one central strand in groups of six. So for example, there will be one central plus six strand twisted around it. And this is going to be called a seven strand conductor. Then if you need uh, another one with the next layer, you would add two times six, which is 12 plus the original seven, which makes 19. And of course, if you want another layer, then you add 18 strands, which is equal to the 37 strand conductor, and etc. as it goes on. Conductor coverings. For locations where it is close to trees or other buildings that might result in occasional contact, covered conductors are the preferred option. Covered conductors are usually covered with high-density polyethylene. The cover is only for mechanical protection and not for electrical protection, 
so workers still need to wear proper PPE and treat it like a bare conductor when doing live work. Lastly, let's talk about the wire sizes. In North America, wire sizes are based on American wire gauge or known as AWG. The smaller the wire, the bigger the number. So for example, number one is a bigger wire size than number two. However, wire sizes bigger than number one are represented by the number of zero and it increases as size increases, such as uh, zero is smaller than double zero or smaller than triple zero, etc. This is actually more commonly called knots. So one zero is called one knot, two zeros is called two knots, etc. And it also be written uh, and it's represented by another written form which is the number slash zero. So for example, four slash zero would be equal to four aught. The formula for calculating the diameter in inches based on the, um, the gauge is going to be as follows. The diameter in inches equals to 0 0.005 times 92 to the power of 36 minus the gauge over 39. Now if you go to the odd sizes then you actually have to go to a negative number. So as for example, if you use a one-odd cable, the AWG is going to be replaced by negative one. And if it's a four-odd size, then you replace the AWG variable by negative four, etc. I hope you enjoy um, this episode uh, in the Electrical Engineering Bootcamp. And if you wish to connect with me, um, I would be more than happy to show you more in the electrical engineering world. Um, for the latest news in the world of electrical engineering, please, please connect me with me through Twitter, which my handle is at EE Bootcamp. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest free training videos for you to have um, uh, more knowledge about electrical engineering and the various industries that are in the electrical engineering world. Lastly, if you wish to connect with me on LinkedIn, please send me a link of your profile to eebootcamp at yahoo.com. And after I receive um, the link to your profile, I will send you a personal invite to connect in LinkedIn. Again, thank you for your time. Have a good one. Bye for now.